Check, please. Hey, welcome back. They're rolling out the 5G and it's scaring everybody. Planes are crashing everywhere. No, that's not happening at all. But um, a lot of chaos has been talked about. We'll talk about how this is going to affect some of the telephone companies. Telephone, listen to me. AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. We'll look at the financials behind some of these. Should you invest in these? How will this help them? We'll talk about all this. Paul and Mo manage over $100 million. I trust them making financial decisions. They've guided me, and they can help guide you through this process of investing. Okay, Mo, tell us about the 5G. So 5G has been on the table for many, many, many years. I think dating back to 2015, 2016. So it, the way that it was presented was that it was going to be such a powerful service that if you were a patient in Cleveland and you needed some kind of surgery, there was, and there was the doctor you needed was in California, they would be able to do the operation for you from California, and 5G was so quick that you could actually do that. Turns out that's not what it is right now. But it's the cell phone service. The big thing right now that's happening with it is people are gravely concerned that when they turn on the 5G towers, which they did yesterday, Wednesday the 19th, that it was going to affect the airline industry, which is pretty funny to me because I think 30 other countries have already turned it on. Uh, their airplanes are fine. Yeah. And we've had, what we've had, five, six years, and it comes down to like two days before, and we're like, wait a second, what about the aviation industry? <laughs> I just look at this saying, this is like Y2K to me. They turned it on. Everything's fine. They have not turned on the towers that are close to airports around the country, but everything seems to be fine. They were worried about the altimeters, the altitude uh, trackers. But, you know, the companies that are really into the 5G, it's AT&T, Verizon. Those are the big ones. Skyworks, um, Ericsson, Nokia, etc. So, Seth, it's interesting. I, I thought that yesterday we were going to see a lot more movement in the 5G stocks. And we didn't really see anything at all. It seems like there's some countries who are concerned about the 5G rollout. Very concerned. I mean, if, if it adds anything to this, I do not put my phone on airplane mode. Mo, when I uh, when we take <laughs> off, I just I just run it. It I don't, turns into airplane mode by itself. I'm just saying, Paul, I'm sure you, you don't flip that airplane mode, do you? Uh, I do sometimes. It just depends. It's like, if I remember to, I do. If I don't, whatever. But because remember, I also... I always use buy the Wi-Fi on the plane, yeah. so I have to go on airplane mode in order to buy the Wi-Fi on the plane. So I can see you doing that from Coach um, Paul. Tell us about what companies can be uh, affected by this the most. We talk about AT. Well, you said AT and T and Verizon, so I'm just going to do it. Those are the two big ones. I mean, those are the people that those are the guys that turned the towers on yesterday. Okay, so They're let's the guys go five G. All right, so go to, let's go to our software here, the Eight Pillars tool. We're going to look at AT and T. We'll pull that one up first. Billions in this. Okay, there. Um, and then we're going to go to ver another one and go to Verizon. So Verizon's a big holding by Berkshire Hathaway. And to this day, I don't understand why. And we have said this. We've done Verizon videos before. And I'm like, I don't get it. Just to go to show, guys, Berkshire Hathaway is brilliant guys. And I don't understand why they bought Verizon. So guess what? I didn't buy Verizon. We were just talking about Micron Technologies. Three of these investors that we adore own, have increased their ownership of Micron Technologies. Mm -hmm. I don't own it because I just don't get it. So keep that in mind when you're doing your research that I'm a measly you know, guy sitting in Akron, Ohio. And these brilliant men buy it. But I believe so much in understanding what I'm buying that these brilliant guys look at, look at the world and say, we're owning this company and I don't get it. So I don't buy it. But Alibaba, I get completely. Charlie Munger is like quadruple his ownership. It makes me feel better. So AT&T, let's just skip right to the eight pillars here. Oh man, look at this price of free cash flow. This is what gets your loins ringing right here. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then PE, five-year PE of 13, five-year uh, free cash flow, 8.3. A lot of debt here. So we've talked about AT&T having a lot of debt. They pay a big dividend here of $15 billion because they like that dividend deal. I think it attracts a lot of investors. But I think they need to start using that dividend to start paying down that debt. There's a lot of debt out there. And dividends are very tax inefficient. They've already paid tax on the corporate level. Then when they issue the dividend, you pay another dividend tax. So when people say uh, it's a beneficial, it's actually double taxation. It's not some beneficial tax structure. You've been taxed twice on that money already. Um, increased shares outstanding. I think that was from an acquisition though. So I'm not as worried about that. Uh, AT and T we've talked about it got as low as twenty three, twenty four bucks. Um, I think I've said I'm kind of in between on AT and T. Yeah, the biggest thing that take the away debt. from AT and T is we want them to buy back shares and get rid of their debt. Yeah, so reduce foc their debt. Focus that focus that free cash flow on buying back shares and reducing debt. Yep. Don't make these acquisitions. However, most companies have to be are forced to make acquisitions to show that they're being active in the world. The good news that they have done and they cut their dividend in half. I think you said it, but I did not say that it. is a, that is something that makes me think they're moving in the right direction here. Okay. Let's go to Verizon. Ridiculous. 
Verizon eight pillars. Oh my lordy! Same sitch with the debt. So the five year free cash flow is thirty five. The five year PE is ten. We want these numbers being pretty close to each other. I don't know why they're so far apart. It's so one of the things I would do if I was doing research is say how is their free cash flow so low compared to their um, their five year PE. Um, shares outstanding is up a little bit. Look at this debt level. Oh, but their fi- their free cash flow is down a lot. So this tells me right here with this debt level so high, we calculate the debt level based on free cash flow. So with the debt level so high, there's no way this is, there must have been some weird year of free cash flow. So I go to the cash flow statement. Oh, there, guys, can I just tell you, and I'm not saying to brag, like I looked at those numbers, focus on this channel and just ingrain yourself in this. I immediately said, something's got to be wrong with this free cash flow, that the cash flow numbers, the debt number is so high in the free cash flow. Look at this. Last year's free cash flow plummeted. They went from $20 billion to negative $22 billion. Why? Big capital expenditures here. Big capital expenditures. So they went and invested a lot of money in something. Don't necessarily punish them. Find out what that, find out why they spent so much $40 billion extra on some capital expenditure. This is exactly what I mean by understanding very basic numbers. We did a video on this. You, all you have to do is understand basic numbers. I mean, looked at saying, okay, something's amiss here. How can they have 37 times free cash flow of debt and such a big discrepancy between free cash flow and earnings? There's got to be some big plummet in free cash flow. Boom, immediately. Most recent year. I don't even remember this. We've done this video before and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that now. But I don't remember that. We do hundreds of videos. We do hundreds of videos a month. I have no idea. So that's the whole point. Understand the numbers. I'm not some savant. This is, this is, if you just ingrain yourself in this, it might take a few years, but it'll pay off so much in the future. Our average viewer is in their early 30s. You have plenty of time to learn. I'm 40. If you spent the next five years learning, you'd be very, very good at investing. The third company with a really ugly chart, Paul, and where do you see some free cash flow? It's just, they're just pillaging money. Is T-Mobile. They'll also be affected by this. T-U-M-S is the ticker. T-U-M-S. They're sorry, all over the sorry, place. T-M-U-S, my T-M-U-S. apologies. T-M-U-S, I was going to say, Tums. I love Tums. They still have that CEO, John. Oof. Remember him? 52-week high, 150. 52-week low, 104. It's... Okay, let's go to the eight pillars tab. They don't even have free cash from the last five years. And look at the shares. Oh, my God. See, I, I don't even, I don't even, I immediately just go, I, I look at this and go, I'm out. No free cash from the last five years. And look at these shares outstanding. And pass. I don't even, to me, it's just too hard to understand. I don't even want to look so at it. So let me remind you as a viewer, there are many, many, many channels that say you need to be first reading 10Ks. You need to be listening to conference calls, even if you want to gain any understanding, almost to the point where you need to be on the executive board for T-Mobile. And our You're channels, wrong. thank you, Paul. I mean, look at, look at this. Look Guys, at I look at this immediately. And if you'd gone to understand the company first before you did it, in a half a second, I go, I'm out. In a half second, I'm, I'm like, I'm out. So go spend hours and hours understanding the company. And then I look at two numbers and go, I'm out. Hey, can you look up how many um, value investors own T-Mobile? Yeah, we'll do. Oh, God. So what we're going to do here, go ahead. Especially when you're comparing companies in an industry. Like we just compared the three major cell phone carriers. If you're going to pick one of them, just go through the numbers and say, okay, this one's, this one's the worst. On to the next. Go yeah. look at Verizon. Go look at AT&T. But, and by the way, I don't condone forcing yourself to buy a company just because it's the of best. Of the, right. But if you're doing sector comparison. T-Mobile. Well, this one's cute now, Paul. Um, Warren Buffett owns it at a small, small, but look at all the people T-Mobile? who actually, this is T-U-M-S, yeah, T-Mobile, right? T-Mobile, look oh, wow. at this. What so you've had names? a lot of shares in the last six months. A lot of people are selling off their T-Mobile. David Tepper? But actually, some people are actually adding to this. In- interesting. So all right. Well, that's good. Good for them. I don't get it. I'm out. And that's the key, as Warren Buffett would say. If you have to question what your circle of competence is, you're, What's you're the total ownership out. percent right here? Percentage of all portfolios, 0.227. 0.227% of all their portfolios in T-Mobile. That's a blip, guys. Yeah. That's a, if you have a, here's how big, small it is. If you have a billion dollar fund, it's $2.2 million of a billion dollars. Is that giving you a lot of confidence? Nope. So finally, I had a conversation with someone yesterday about AT&T, and they said something to the effect of, why would I ever buy AT&T? It hasn't moved in 25 years. I literally would have made no money. Can you explain that that question? Um, yeah, so I don't know where AT&T started in terms of valuation over the last 25 years, but along the way, I don't know if their financials got better, if they built a stable cash flow. If they're undervalued, though, you have to be patient sometimes. Like, I can't, I agree with you. It's frustrating. You've gotten a dividend along the way. So if you got a dividend along the way and the stock has gone nowhere, you've still gotten some return along the way. I just, if the stock's gone nowhere, have they paid? I don't know. To answer that just without even looking at the 25 years of the company, but if you overpaid 25 years ago, exactly. 
then it makes sense that it went nowhere. That's what we talk about. Yeah. If you it's like Intel, Cisco, Micron, all these companies have gone nowhere, have actually gone down in the last 22 years, but the companies are great, make great buys today. Right. Well, that's our take on the 5G rollout. Obviously, we're not 5G rollout specialists, but we are specialists on how to value companies. And if you want to be more of a specialist, you can have the software. Paul, tell them how. So guys, we created the software because our subscribers were sick of waiting for us to make videos and they wanted to be able to analyze their own stocks on their own. So we created the software. We put it all on your mobile phone. So everything you saw in the video is available on your mobile phone in full. You get 30 years of financial data. You get access to Seth Mo and I. You get the full eight pillar analysis. You get the full stock analyzer tool. And then you also get everything that's coming right here. Everything down here. Exclusive video content only for our subscribers, the chat community with all of our users, and access to Seth Mo and I. This is all available for only $1 per day. That's it. $1 per day if you can just increase your gains by 1% or 2% or decreases your losses by 1% or 2% each year. This will lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions, in your portfolio at some point in the future when you retire. This is a no-brainer. $1 per day. You're locked in at the price. There are two ways to sign up. EverythingMoney.com or Patreon. The benefit of EverythingMoney.com is we're not large enough yet to charge a sales tax, so you get to save the sales tax for the time being. So again, guys, $1 per day gets you locked in, leads to hundreds of thousands, if not millions. No brainer, sign up. And if you want to trade any of these companies at a quicker pace, Mo can guide you in the glorious Bidnass Nation, one of our trading tiers. Go ahead, Mo. Guys, I just went through and I picked my, my favorite out of the three from a long-term perspective because to me, these kind of stocks, like Seth said, these are stocks that are I consider dinosaurs. They kind of sit in one range and they just go up and then they come back down. So AT&T is just, it'll move up through the sweet spot. It'll go sideways. It'll come down, move sideways, et cetera. So right now, as you can see, we are smack dab in the middle of the sweet spot. This right here, where this resistance is, that's the 200-day moving average. So as soon as we get an engulfing candlestick through the 200-day moving average, this is a perfect ad from a long-term perspective. Literally doesn't get any better than this. You're in the middle of the sweet spot. You've made a move up. You wait for one engulfing candlestick over the 200-day moving average, and boom, there you go. This is literally perfect. If you like what Mo's saying, join that bid and ask. You can get, you can join today. And uh, Paul, we need to start day trading back again. Yep, we'll do that. We're gonna be doing it live for you guys in the bid and ask. So that is our take on 5G on AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. Stick with us. Watch more videos. See you next week. Thanks so much. <laughs> 